Alrighty Haas, welcome back to another video and now that you guys know how to handle simple touch events like a tap what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to handle gestures now a gesture is a special type of touch event now there are a bunch of different types but the ones I'm going to be showing you guys how to handle in this tutorial are something like scrolling so for example when the user has their finger on the screen and they tap down and then they drag it up and let go so that's a scroll maybe you're reading I don't know some article online um, another thing is a fling and a fling is kind of like a scroll but you put your finger down and you just fling it up and then you release your finger at the same time and this is actually a common gesture whenever you have like a reading app and you have a bunch of pages so flinging can be like turning a page and there's some other ones as well and one of the special ones actually is a double tap and that needs its new interface or an entirely different interface but I'm gonna be showing you guys all of them it's gonna be real simple so the first thing I did is I created a brand new project I named it swiper diaper because I wanted to include the word swiper in it so I'm gonna be showing you guys the swipe and um, I don't know the diaper just kind of popped into my head so here we are looking at a blank project with one activity swiper diaper so go ahead and delete this text view boom roasted and drag out a large text right here and I'm just gonna give this a new ID of what can I name you ID so many options how about Bucky's massage Bucky's message there we go alright so now we have this text right here that has the idea of Bucky's message and just because it's annoying me I'm just gonna name this like um, Bucky's text alright so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna be calling a bunch of different gestures and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to implement them and for example whenever we scroll then I'll just change this text to scroll and whenever we fling I'll just change this text to fling so again this is the only interface we need and the text is gonna change depending on what gesture we do pretty boring app but it's really useful for just demonstrating this example so that's actually the only thing that we need to do for this pretty boring design so now let's hop over to the Java class let me get myself all situated and the first thing I want to do is this we need to import a bunch of stuff and after I import it I'll explain why we are importing everything so the first thing is import and well since we need a reference to that text view we can just go ahead and import that now and that's Android widget dot text view and I have a burp coming in like 10 seconds come on just get out just get out burp staying down in there okay now in next we need to import Android view and motion event now two other things import Android dot view dot gesture detector that is a pretty cool name all right now import Android dot support dot v4 oh, I thought it was gonna fill in the entire thing for me v4 dot view oh it might oh mg that was pretty sweet wow I wish there was a program where you could just type tab 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 next thing you know you had like a social networking app but uh actually that would be pretty dumb so I don't know I'm just entertaining myself over here alright so we imported all the crap we need so why did we import all of that well this is how you detect gestures what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to implement a couple interfaces now these interfaces have methods inside them that are pretty much responsible for detecting gestures now you can implement them in a bunch of different ways but we're just going to use the same class right here so what we're going to do is implements and the first one is gesture. Oh, come on. Gesture detector 
dot on gesture listener and I'm running out of space so I'm just gonna add a comma and the other one we want is gesture detector on double tap listener so again these are two different interfaces that we're gonna implement and again this one right here this on gesture listener this is for your common gestures like flinging and scrolling and a couple other ones as well this on double tap listener of course you guys probably could have guessed this is for um, listening for double taps so that's what we're gonna be doing right there now the first thing that I actually want to do is before we start using these methods that we just implemented I'm actually gonna go above right here and I'm gonna get a reference to this while I remember it so since we're gonna be using it in a bunch of different methods that's why I just don't want to stick this variable in one of them since I want to use it um, throughout a bunch of them so private text view and I'll just call this Bucky's message that is what I called it isn't it yep all right now another thing that I probably should do right here is private gesture detector compat right there and G gesture detector pretty good name and again you guys know that this variable is just going to be a reference for here obviously and this little gesture detector again that's the object from the class that pretty much is going to detect gestures and I'll show you guys later on how to use that but for now since we implemented both of these interfaces what we need to do is we actually need to use those methods so actually I'm gonna stick those right after the on create just because I don't know it just feels right and I'm gonna hit alt insert now I'm gonna hit implement methods so this is pretty much saying okay you implemented this interface on double tap listener so these are the methods from there you have to implement or use essentially and on gesture listener these are the methods that you're using from there so as you can see on scroll on down which pretty much means your fingers down on fling which pretty much means you like fling up like you're scrolling through something so I'm just gonna hit OK and what's gonna happen is it's gonna automatically insert all of those for us so again that's our promise whenever we're implementing that we're gonna use all of those methods and now we fulfilled our promise but it's still kinda of boring because we didn't do anything with them yet so the first thing I'm actually gonna do is go up to my onCreate method and give myself a little bit of room now you need to add three lines of code to the onCreate method the first one is you guys probably could have guessed that Bucky's message you actually need to take care of it right here so you guys remember how to do this don't really need to talk you guys through it find view by ID r dot ID dot Bucky's message so now we got a reference to the message now we can actually tweak it whenever we have a gesture now then another thing I want to do is pretty much just housekeeping stuff but this gesture detector remember that was the object I'm gonna set this equal to new gesture detector compat and then I pass in this this so again what this is is an object from this class which pretty much allows us to detect gestures simple enough so the last thing I want to do is set gesture detector and I'm gonna call a method on it called set double tap listener or set on double tap listener now I'm gonna pass in this and what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to detect double taps as well so it's kind of annoying that they they probably have a good reason behind this but they separated um, the basic gestures from the double tap ones why they did that I'm not sure but they did it so that's why we have kind of redundant code from time to time so now all I need to do is this and this is actually really easy 
So on each of those methods that we um, are implementing, I'm just going to call a quick little, um, just do this and copy and paste it a bunch of times, I guess. All right, on single, actually, I'm going to do this even lazier. All right, so essentially what I'm going to do is on each gesture that we're overriding, I'm going to set a little message to change the text on the screen to whatever gesture just occurred. So just like this. And instead of going through all of these, actually, you guys can do that. I'm going to pause my video because it's probably going to take like a minute or so. And you guys don't need to see me do the same exact thing like 10 different times. So one sec. All right, guys. So what I did is I added the functionality to change the text on the screen every time a gesture occurs. Now, another thing I want to mention, or by, by the way, I also added two little comments to the source code so you guys can tell when the gestures are beginning and when they're ending and which is pretty much the default code that was there before. So if you guys are copying the source code from the forum and you see that, that's what they are. So once you have all of your messages set, we need to do a couple more things. The first thing is, you see how all of these return false by default? Well, we actually want to return true on all of those. And remember, the reasoning behind that is because return true essentially means that, okay, whenever this override method occurs, return true says the event was handled. The touch event was handled. If you don't have this return true, then what's going to happen is, for example, whenever you scroll, it's going to say on scroll on the screen, the text is indeed going to change, but the event, that touch event, isn't going to be consumed. In other words, it's going to say, okay, well, you still got to take care of this touch event. Whenever we return true, it says, okay, well, actually, that's all we wanted to do. Touch event taken care of. So it doesn't pass it along for something else to handle it. 